everybody, it's Marty Hernandez from Media Current. In this week's Learning Bits tutorial, I'm going to talk about uh, navigation. And this is going to be a two-part video, uh, which is we are going to build a navigation in PatternNav. We're going to build a component or a pattern. And then we are going to integrate that navigation with Drupal so that whatever we do in PatternNav will be reflected in Drupal. So let's get started. When I build a navigation, if I know I'm going to be using that navigation in Drupal, what I like to do is take a look and see how Drupal is building that menu or navigation so that I can take advantage of a lot of the things that Drupal does really great when it comes to menu or navigations. So I have a Drupal 9 website here, but uh, all these uh, principles will apply to Drupal A as well, just the same. And I created a navigation, a main menu. Uh, or main navigation uh, and added a bunch of links uh, using the develop module. And what I like to do first is I want to see how Drupal is rendering this menu. I'm going to inspect the code and I can see uh, this an order list tag is what uh, Drupal is using to render this menu. Here are the top level links. Some of these have drop downs, right? Is one of the items in itself has another drop down here. So Drupal uses different tweak templates to render different things, uh, right? And so menus, uh, for menus, Drupal uses this template called menu.html.twig. And we can see that this is the template Drupal is using to render this navigation because it's got this X next to it. Uh, if we look down here, we can see that this template is coming from this location here. It's coming from the stable theme core theme inside templates navigation. So our goal is to customize our navigation, but we don't want to make those customizations to every single menu in a Drupal website. We just want to do it for our main navigation. And so the best way to do, uh, or the best way to go about this is to make a copy of this template in our own theme. So let's do that now. Inside my Drupal project, I'm going to expand web, core, themes, stable, that's the theme that uh, we are using as our base theme, and templates. Inside templates, we have a navigation directory. And in here, we have that template that we just looked at, menu.html.twig. I'm going to make a copy of this, Command-C. Now I'm going to go into my theme, custom, I'm going to source, uh, your theme structure may look different, uh, but I'm basically looking for the templates directory. This is the directory where Drupal looks for Twig templates. And in here, I'm going to create a new directory so that I can follow the same structure as Drupal core. I'm going to call that navigation. And I'm going to command V to paste that template that I just copy. And here it is. You'll notice that Drupal is using a, a macro to render the menu. And this is great because with a macro, you can write the code once, and this macro will continue to run every time that it finds the same pattern. I did record a video on Twig macros, so uh, I would suggest you take a look at that so you can have a better understanding what macros are, how they work, and how you can take advantage of them. And so the nice thing about this template that Drupal uses is that it gives us a lot of information about what Drupal is doing with our menu. Uh, for example, it's saying that it's got an items array. This is all the different link items that Drupal uh, is rendering, and they are all together in a single array called items. And in there, there's uh, many other properties or keys. For example, below. Below is a an array as well that represents submenus inside a link item. So any drop downs that we have on our navigation uh, will be part of the below array. And then we have the title, URL. These are the things that you see the title of the link, the URL of the link, uh, things like is expanded, is collapsed, uh, is active trail. Those things are very useful. And uh, that's the reason we want to do this here is we want to see how Drupal is using because we want to make use of these things in our pattern lab component. Now that we made a copy of our template, let's go ahead and clear the cache in Drupal so that Drupal is aware that the menu template now is inside our theme 
and that it should use that template to render the menu. I'm going to inspect this again. And we, we don't see any change. Obviously, we haven't made any code changes. But now we can see that Drupal is still using the same template name, right? But the difference this time is that the template that Drupal is using to render the menu is now inside our theme. It's not coming from Drupal core. So that's a good thing. However, uh, even if we were to use this template and make changes to this template, this will affect all menus in our entire Drupal website. And that's not what we want. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we customize the main navigation only and not other menus on our site. So to do that, Drupal gives us a, a nice suggestions for templates. For example, uh, since we are working with the main navigation, the main navigation machine name in Drupal is main, Drupal is saying, well, you can create a copy of this template and call it menu dash dash main. I'm going to make a copy of it and rename this copy to match the name that Drupal is suggesting for a template name. If I clear cache again, we want to make sure that Drupal now recognizes that, okay, there is a new template now in our theme and um, we want Drupal to use that template. Again, if we inspect this, you can see that Drupal is using the menu dash dash main template. And that's the one with the X next to it. Sometimes you'll see duplicates. That's probably just a bug or some caching issue. So let's build our navigation component. We'll come back to this template shortly. I'm going to go into patterns, source patterns, components. Again, your theme structure may be different, but basically I'm going into the area where I create my components. I'm going to create a new folder here, call it navigation. Inside, I'm going to create a new file, navigation twig to write all the markup that we need for our navigation component and pattern of. And I'm also going to create a navigation.json, or you can do YAML. Uh, this file's purpose is to basically mimic the data structure for our menu. So what I've done here is I've uh, created an items array the same way that Drupal is doing it. And each of these items is a link, right? A list item. And I brought in the same properties or keys that Drupal is using or expecting. Things like title, URL, uh, is active trail, right? There are many others we could use, but for now this will do fine. So here is the home page. Here is the about us link. Uh, but notice that this one has a below array within it, meaning that this particular link will have a drop down of sub menus. So how do we write the markup? so that we make a uh, use of that render array. So since we are planning to use everything uh, from how Drupal is doing things, the best thing that I found to do is basically use the code in this template to build our component. So I'm going to copy all of this into my navigation.twig. So again, if you watch the video that I created on macros, you'll understand why I'm importing this self variable. Uh, this is done if the macro that you're trying to use is written in the same template that, where you're trying to use it. Uh, otherwise, if this macro exists somewhere else, you can actually, uh, on the import, you can choose the path to where the macro file is. Uh, we have a mac macro name called menu links, and it, it takes parameters uh, such as items, which is the menu array, uh, the attributes from Drupal, and a menu level, right? Since we have a multi-level menu with multiple uh, sub-menus, then it's going to be important that we identify which menu level we are working with at any given time. We're checking whether there is any items, first of all, whether the navigation has uh, any links, right? And if the uh, heading is the menu level is zero, then we are going to apply Drupal's attributes or we can apply a specific class to the top level menu. Else, it's going to be the unordered list items that we have, right? And we can also apply specific classes to this one so that each of our drop downs have specific classes, maybe the level that they're in, so that we can style them specifically. Then we do a loop on in the entire items array. 
And for each item in that array, we're going to create a list item. And then inside there, we will have a link with the title and URL. And then if any of these list items has a sub menu, right, meaning that if there is a below array, then we're going to apply the macro one more time. And this time we're going to be increasing the menu level by one. And that will come in handy when we start styling things. And so, so this is the, the main thing why we are using this macro here so we can take advantage of all of that. We will make some changes to the markup. We want to add more uh, user-friendly classes to our menus and our links and things like that. Okay, so we have the macro ready to go. Now, there are a few things here that are Drupal-specific, things like attributes and uh, this link function here. This is something that is specific to Drupal that Pattern Lab doesn't know anything about. And this could create problems for us. For example, if I save this file and compile my theme, now that my theme has been compiled, this component should be built now. If I go to Pattern Lab and under components, I go to navigation, you can see that uh, we're not getting exactly what we expect in. Uh, we're getting these hashtags instead of links. One way we can solve this problem is, uh, I know in Pattern Lab, we don't have access to attributes. I don't know if doesn't know what attributes is, but Drupal does. So we can use that as a qualifier, a conditional. So basically we can say if attributes, we are going to print this link function, right? Because we are, uh, if we find, if we have access to attributes, that means we will be in Drupal. Else we are going to print the links using a regular anchor tag. Uh, the only difference is that we are going to be passing the data from our JSON file, right? So uh, this item title and item URL is still being available here, uh, except that the structure of the link is now not using this link function, but instead just using a regular link. So let's save this and this should automatically compile our theme again. If I save this, you can see that uh, my theme has been compiled. Pattern Lab should reload. And now we can see all of the links, right? Uh, so this tells us that our component is pulling the data properly from our JSON file. And we can see all the data structure the same way we were looking at this in Drupal. So, so, so far, so good. Uh, now, if we notice here that by default, we set up the menu uh, the menu level to zero, meaning that the first item is going to uh, be menu level zero, and then subsequently items or sub menus will have a menu level of one, two, three, because we're increasing this by one. So let's test this real quick. Let's say uh, we are going to add a class, Pattern Lab Reloads. If I inspect this again, we can see that now our first menu item here, it's got the new class that we just added. If I dig into some of the other, like this one here, has a an order list nested in there, a sub menu, but this one doesn't have a class. So our logic there uh, for the menu level is working. One of the things that I like to do is, uh, if you recall, we can actually see here, uh, Drupal has all these things uh, available. So we would like to make use of this uh, to add a little more logic and context to our list items and our links. So here I'm setting up a few classes, CSS classes that I can pass to each of the list items in the navigation. Uh, I'm setting up things like the, the level that each list item is in, uh, whether this list item is within the active trail. Uh, this helps us uh, to ensure that we keep uh, styles um, that reflect uh, what menu a link may be active on, uh, whether an item has a sub menu, right? And we are adding classes like saying, okay, if the item has a sub menu, then we're going to add a class to this list item that says it has children, uh, or whether the item is the last item on the list, we're going to add this class of item last. And so this will all help us uh, as we style the menu later on. So we are going to use the add class method for attributes and we are going to pass the item classes array 
that we set up up here so that all these classes will apply to the list item based on all these conditions that are happening here. Now, again, this will work in Drupal because we are using attributes and this method here, but this is not going to work in Pattern Lab because Pattern Lab doesn't know about uh, these things. So we are going to repeat the same logic that we did before. If we are in Drupal, basically, if we have access to attributes, we are going to do that. Else, we are going to manually uh, assign the classes that we specify above. So we are using the item classes uh, array that we say here, and we're passing this as part of the add class method for the attributes for, for Drupal. But for Pattern Lab, we are manually setting the classes. We're still using some of the same logic, uh, but we are uh, more explicitly passing the classes and and this will allow us to basically end up uh, both in Paralab and Drupal with the same classes so they both match so I'm going to save this again my code is compiled Paralab reloads and uh, if I inspect things we should expect to see now a little more context for each of the things that are happening here notice how each list item has in addition to the navigation item class which is common on all of them, is also has the level that each item is in. The other thing that I've done is I created a classes array just like I did for the items array. I did one for the links. So that we can apply the same kind of context to each of the links, uh, mainly the link class and the level uh, that the link is in. Again, this could help us later on as we start styling things based on the level that they appear. So I created a, an array for links. And um, here, just like we did before, I'm checking for whether we have attributes available. If we do, that means we are in Drupal. And then we can pass this uh, new class attribute to the link where we are passing that link classes array that we created up here. For Pattern Lab, we are doing uh, something similar to what we did with the items and that is we are manually adding the links uh, i'm sorry the classes if we go to pattern lab and inspect the code we will see that things are looking so much better now we have classes that correspond to the type of level that each of the items are in classes for the main menu itself for the level of the list and the links themselves have a class now uh, that represents the level uh, if we look at the app about us link in this example, we can see that now the level for this sub menu is two. The list items for each of them uh, within that sub menu is also two. So this is looking really, really good. The last thing I'm going to do for this last first part video is I'm going to add some styles to our navigation so that it starts to look the way we expect it to look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new SAS style sheet. And here I'm going to pay some styles that I rewrote. Uh, all of this code will be available. So uh, click the link below this video and you will be able to see uh, all the code that I'm actually writing here. So let me save this real quick. Now, if we look at Pattern Lab, we can see that now our navigation is looking much nicer. Uh, we can see now that we have drop downs, multiple drop downs actually. And this is looking really, really good. So uh, the next video on this series will be how we can make use of this navigation component in Drupal. I hope this was helpful and stay tuned for the next video.